That's better. Something like this that you can do absolutely bespoke driving position. It's, you're going to jump in and just feel right, you know. Yeah, well, it's all go and activity in here today. Um, but uh, yeah, we've, we've come a long way since the last time uh, we talked about the car. I think we were just doing the quarters last time. We'd done one, I think the other one was waiting to go on. That's obviously now on. And then we kind of turned our attention to the sills, um, which you'd think would be straightforward. Uh, and we had a pattern sill, you know, a replacement panel to go on there. Uh, and after the, after the sort of joy of how good the quarter panels were, we were expecting all the panels to be that good and the sills were awful. <laughs> so bad in fact that we just didn't even bother using them we've made our own completely from scratch uh, i mean they were just so kind of uncrisp the the, the pressing and there's a swage line under here uh, that runs all the way along and obviously the back part of it's on the quarter panel and that flows into the sill and it was probably eight mil different from one to the other so it just wasn't going to line up and i know you're never really going to look under here at this line but it just wasn't going to do and it would have been that much effort to redo the panels uh, that we had, we just thought we'd make them from scratch. So we, we just completely made the sills up um, all the way from the, from the front corner where they meet the A post to where we've joined them to the course panel there. Once we'd done that, we had a bit of head scratching over the floors. I'll just open the door again. Um, we had some rust in the floors both sides, which we saw early on. And the kind of more we looked at it, we, we saw pinholes elsewhere. There was a few pinholes at the back. There's a, normally a cross member that runs under the seat. Uh, and that once we'd removed that, there was quite a lot of pinholing under there as well. It was kind of all pointing in the direction of there being quite a lot of sections to make. Um, and we knew we were going to have to cut all the tunnel out anyway. And after a bit of sort of head scratching and toing and froing, we thought, you know what, we're going to be best just to replace the whole floor. So we took the whole of the original floor pan out, bought a complete floor pan repair panel, um, and cut the tunnel section out of that because we knew that was going to be different, uh, and put, put a whole new floor in basically. Um, and it was, it was also, again, nice with the floor off to be able to get inside the chassis rails and that's something we've, I've bleated on about the whole time, is, is being able to get inside all the areas that you can't normally get to. You know, when we had the quarters off, we were able to get to the insides of the inner quarters. Um, you know, and likewise, with the floors off, we could get to the inside of the chassis rails completely. Um, so we've cleaned all of that out, and we were actually able to epoxy prime inside the, the hollow section of the chassis rail before we then put the floor on. And we've been able to do the floor almost exactly how it would have been originally. And then we kind of set about doing the tunnel then. So we already had the gearbox on here um, last time. And it was pretty obvious that the height it sits at, um, the tunnel was going to need extending quite a long way back. So we've actually fabricated a complete new tunnel from the front to about here. Because we were doing a com the complete floor pan swap, it, uh, that also allowed us to do a little trick on the floor pan, which was that we could cut the old one at a certain position and then cut the new one in a higher position and then join the two tunnel sections together to actually give us a raised transmission tunnel that looks kind of like the original uh, on the rear section there. And then the front's just been completely handmade. We've used, we've used just the tunnel top part there from the original Escort just because it was a convenient form and it did seem pointless to remake that part when it was okay anyway. And all of that was kind of working towards your overall driving position. We've obviously got a seat in here now, um, and that's, you know, the, the idea is Gordon's going to come in, have a sit in it, and see how it feels. I, I've set this up to my driving position because I'm actually not a dissimilar size. He's a tiny bit taller than me, but um, we're not that dissimilar. Um, so we've set the seat really nice and low. I'm six foot two. He's probably six three, six four, I guess. Um, 
and so headroom's an issue for both of us, I think. Uh, so we've set that pretty low, a little bit angled back so you've got a nice bit of support under your legs. Um, and that, that then allows us to basically work out where, we, where the steering wheel feels comfortable and also just see what, what, what it's like for foot room. And it's not too bad. The tunnel's a lot bigger than the original. There's not really any encroachment into the clutch space at all. Um, it would be nicer if there was a room for a clutch rest and if we offset the pedals to the right we could do that but I doubt that's going to be the, the route we go down but that's going to be personal preference um, and that, that's what it's all about really is, is getting you know the driving position is so much down to personal preference if we can get it, him in there and get everything in the position he wants then we can do it exactly how he wants it. Another bit which we're literally working on right now um, is the front end. We've obviously cut out all of the front, but then we've changed uh, the radiator side panels. We've made new panels there and this cross member panel here. Um, and we've kind of designed those around the radiator we're using and the oil cooler that's going to go in the front. And also taking into account the, the dry sump tank, which is going to go this side. The dry sump pump is, uh, is on that side. Um, so we've got to get oil routed from there around via the cooler to the tank and then back from the tank to the pump. Um, and we were kind of looking at the neatest way to do that and also mount the fabricated alloy radiator that's going in there. Um, so what we've come up with is we've raised the radiator height very slightly. I mean, we've got to watch bonnet clearance, so we were getting the bonnet on there to check that. But we've raised the, the radiator a bit higher than they would normally be fitted. Um, which has left a space kind of underneath the radiator behind here on the back of this cross member to run the, the line that comes from the dry sump tank back into the engine or into the oil pump. Um, we're going to be designing this dry sump tank uh, completely to fill that space exactly. The hole over here is for cold air intake to the engine so there'll be a, there'll be a pipe coming off that to a plenum on the throttle bodies there. And then we've Stu's just put this little recess in this side just for cosmetic reasons really just because it looks it kind of mirrors the shape on both sides there's no more reason to it than that the oil cooler is going to mount on rubber bobbins which go here and they're, they're like little double stud mounts and you have to be able to get to the back of them to put a nut on these slots here are actually slightly functional in that you can get in with a spanner underneath by the time this is closed off with the valance here you can still get in with a spanner to put the nuts on the back of those mounts Got like two hours. Are you excited? Yeah, you know what? Until Gordon gets here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm really excited. I can't wait to see him. It's it's been a while. Uh, must have been at the One Formula exhibition uh, last year. I can't remember when that was. October, November time, I think. That's the last time I saw him. So uh, it'd be really good to catch up. The last time he was here, the car was was just still fat on its wheels over there and we had a good look around it and a good chat but no he hasn't seen it since then so it's, he's obviously seen the pictures but there's been a bit of a roller coaster of work since then um, but it's really yeah it's really coming together it's exciting to be thinking more now about the design side of um, you know the interior and the suspension uh, and kind of progressing with that rather than just chipping away at rock repair because that's kind of the more exciting bit is, is the suspension design and the interior design and and kind of all, all the changes, I guess, it, what sums that up, it's the, st the custom work to it rather than just the standard repairing bits to how they were. You know, that, that's the thing that really gets us going is, is kind of uh, putting our own stamp on it. last time but there's been a bit of a redesign in terms of the suspension so what I'm trying to do is make use of the strength of the diff casing to, and try and minimize weight um, this is the the rear carrier structure the way it's bolted to the diff at the moment is is a very loose mock-up this plate is a is a temporary mock-up piece which is um, just a laser cut three millimeter steel outline of the rough shape of the aluminium billet piece that's going to go on the back of the diff casing. That's 50 millimetres thick in total, uh, machined down in a lot of places and a lot of weight taken out of it to, to lighten it, but that, that will bolt to the back of the diff casing and then this will bolt to the back of that billet piece. And then all of that will then hold 
the, the, this ear will be part of the aluminium piece. But that, at that point, it'll be 50 mil thick, and the wishbone will then bolt to it there. So the upright will be sitting. Let's move this out of the way. So the upright will be sitting roughly there. The tie link in there, and then that this rear part of the wishbone will be mounted to a an aluminium boss which is part of a billet rear cover for the diff which will keep the oil in mount this carrier which will hold the whole lot into the car and mount the rear half of the wishbone then the front half of the wishbone will be mounted to another cradle which doesn't yet exist because i've been kind of working on how to do that <laughs> um, and then between the two there'll be a tie bar that links the rear bush to the front bush uh, and also acts as the nut there'll be a bolt in from the back to hold that half and a bolt in from the front to hold this half of the wishbone and the whole lot will be tied together by a tie bar that's like a big long nut or it's a tube in the middle with thread with threaded sort of hexagonal sections at the ends um, so that will then mean that that's completely solid and there's no flex between the front and back which should give us pretty good location of the wishbone I'm quite concerned, it would probably be. <laughs> no, I'm a little bit nervous because uh, obviously I'm aware that I'm tinkering around with, uh, with bits of road car uh, for somebody that is going to be rather more aware of suspension design than I am. Um, at the same time, it is a road car, we're not designing a Formula One car, clearly. I'm going to weigh everything when it's done and compare the weight to a live axle. I'm hoping I'm not going to be a huge percentage heavier than a live axle. The, the big advantage is the unsprung weight, so I don't, but I don't want to sacrifice too much sprung weight for the sake of reducing the unsprung. But I'm kind of optimistic that all the component weights are quite, quite low, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't be too far away. That's the rear diff cover, the bit that's missing out there on the, uh, on the table, where that laser cut bit of three mil steel was was bolted to the back of the diff that's where this will bolt on the, all, all these bolt holes bolt to the to the rear of the diff housing um there's a, a considerable thickness of aluminium there that's that's actually an inch thick there uh, it's a bit excessive but we need i need to space all of it back for packaging in the car and i want to reinforce the back of the diff housing quite heavily because i'm then going to be putting a wishbone load into it um, that point there, that's, that's where the wishbone is carried. The wishbone bush will sit on the back face of that. And then the, to, to put that into double shear in the same plane as that wishbone bush, that big carrier frame that you saw on the table then sits in the same plane as the wishbone bush. But that mounts to that hole and that hole and that hole and that hole on there. So that, that trapezium shape then sits in the middle of there. The immediate next steps are uh, get that made. Uh, we're going to get uh, our man up the road to uh, machine that in aluminium, 6082T6 aluminium, and get it anodised. Um, and once that's done, then that can bolt onto the diff. Uh, make the tie rods that tie between the front and rear suspension points. They're actually being done now. They'll be done hopefully before the end of the day. Uh, make the tie rods that tie the other side of the upright to the wishbone, add the wishbone, re wishbone reinforcer, once I've had a little chat with Gordon about it, because I'm not, still not convinced I need that, so I'm holding fire on that until I've had a chat with Gordon. It's interesting how much having somebody who, uh, in his, uh, in his uh, car exhibition, um, has the weight in red of every single car there. It's amazing how much that focuses you on trying not to put weight in things. So I've been, I'm trying to, trying to keep the weight down as much as I can, but equally I'm aware that it's a road car and I can't have it break. So, uh, so I'm just juggling that. But yeah, the, 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 front, the main front mount is the other significant bit of fabrication. Once those bits are done, that's the rear suspension basically complete. It's then crank it up underneath the car, make eight brackets and some reinforcing spreader plates, weld them to the chassis and it's, it's on.
Should we go over Mars? Yeah, let's go and have a look. Positionally, it's all the same. That's just a laser cut blank of the CAD piece that will be done in aluminium. Mm -hmm. um, there'll actually be a, a, a 50 mil thick uh, boss off there which carries half of the wishbone, if you like. The, yeah. This frame will sit then further back because that aluminium disc with you, cover yeah, yeah, yeah. will fr space all that back. That, that tube, the plane that, that that's in, will be in the same plane as that bush housing. Uh -huh. And then the double shear for that bush housing will come off that, will be a tab off that frame yep. the back. So it'll be on the aluminium boss this side. And, and the front leg, what does that pick the up? The front on? leg will be, that's the bit that's still not done yet. Basically, that will be a tube that comes across curves slightly forward and picks mm -hmm. up off two more bushes onto the inside of the chassis. These are both onto um, basically shear plates onto the chassis rails. The only question mark I had was, I wasn't initially, and now I've got all nervous about it, going to put any tie between the front and rear of the wishbone. Mm -hmm. But I see everybody does tie front to rear of a wishbone. Well, that's... And then I figure that actually the flex in your bushes will then give you a little bit of flex in the wishbone and maybe I ought to put a tie in. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the only reason you do. Is, it's because of the bush flex. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and the wishbone spread. Yeah. Um, now that's going to be but, tied directly there. Yeah, but... The brackets can't spread, but it, but it could spread against the bushes, so... I've... But usually, with a, with a long wishbone like that, the amount of compression you get in the end of, the, in, in the end of this cotton reel, um, it'll just take, be taken out in the bend. Yeah, yeah. And, one of the main reasons people brace these across here, if, if these um, connections here aren't tied together on the chassis, yeah, which they it are spreads on. the chassis. Yeah, yeah. And that's this, why... This, which is why I wanted to put that tension rod directly between them. On yeah, this. so you take yeah. the spread out of the chassis and you, yeah. and you, and you triangulate the wishbone. Yeah. If you've got a really solid mounting on your chassis, yeah. you can usually get away without that with a long wishbone. If I understand you correctly, yeah. that's trapped between there. That's yeah. going to be very stiff. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's a very big aluminium piece. This is, isn't yeah. it? It's going to be but, very, very stiff. And then that's and, tied back to that. And so this is your diff mount. Yeah, that that will be a diff mount. Basically, another tube. So what's which the comes, overhang from? The overhang there is is about as you see it there. Okay. It's quite substantial. The overhang there, but that's going to be tied onto this tube. The tube will be tied to the diff there, and then the wishbone will be separate to the tube. That won't be tied directly to that. Or that wasn't the plan at the minute because okay, the tube so, will be directly. So then, then that's the answer. So you either you either stiffen this up on the chassis, yeah. you tie that back to there, or you tie it back to here, and then you don't need it on the wishbone. Yeah. I have to say something. When you when you first talked about getting a you know a good shell, yeah, I knew this and, was coming. And you said, <laughs> and you said we found this good shell. Yeah. And, and you can I, slap me now. <laughs> when I came up to see it, I thought, I, got, I know you, you guys know what you're doing, but <laughs> my God, the amount of work, you know. Yeah, I, when yeah. he said a good shell, I expected a pristine, no yeah. dents, no rust. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't find one of those. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's, uh, it's so it's so difficult. I mean, a lot yeah. of people have have made that comment. And I, I can't help but think, yeah, yeah, we've replaced a ridiculous mm. amount of metal on it. But the fact is, from our experience, yeah. a lot of the cars that look outwardly great, you strip them back and yeah. there's a hell well, of a lot of Well, I was going to say, in watching the blogs, that is the good thing, because now you've had to do that much work. There's no, hid no, there's no hidden exactly. stuff anymore. Jump in. Right. I've had a sit. We've basically done the it seat at the moment, roughly for how I like it. So, <laughs> you know, there's a good starting point. But there's, a, but there's a lot of lot to do on it. You can slide it for, for and after. We've got okay. the slider working if you want okay. to. Uh, 
to try wheel. out. But the, the biggie that Nat probably wants to talk about is, is the steering wheel position, which is, you know, I'd, I'd like, yeah, we want yeah. your thoughts initially before we start putting too many, uh, yeah. <laughs> too many of ours in, but. I know what I liked and disliked. Is that the right diameter? That's what it's going to be, yes? I would say smaller, but it's your preference, really. I mean, my preference would be probably an inch, inch and a half smaller, yeah. It just feels a bit big. Yeah, yeah. that would be mine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go more than an inch smaller, though. No, okay. We've got yeah. an inch, inch smaller, then, yeah. What is that, 360 or...? You know what, I don't know. Or 15 inch or something. I'm just... Where's my tape measure? How, how tall are you, by the way? 6'4". No, that's what I said, I said earlier when we were talking about it, it's got to be 6'3 or 6'4 because I'm 6'2. You're definitely taller than me. Feels a little bit high. Yeah, yeah, that's what well, we both said the same. But, but it'll be better, obviously, with a smaller wheel. It's this yeah. Yeah. angle here. Yeah. The throttle could be anywhere, couldn't it? Yeah. But the brake and the throttle are probably okay there, funnily enough. That was kind of our view, was that the brake, um, my, 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 certainly my thoughts were that the brake's bang on where it is. Now, now that we've got the pedals in the right place, you know, that's, I'd be sitting. Yeah, yeah you're like two, two inches further back than even I. Well, I'm really long in the leg. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Angle of the seat base, how does that feel? Seat back. So, well, it's, it's, really, it's fixed, so base yeah, on no. back, the whole thing. No, that feels just yeah, absolutely yeah, that's perfect. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I thought perfect, that was yeah, spot on. That's better. And with a slightly, I've got a little bit of an issue there, but with a slightly smaller wheel, that would probably be yeah. okay. Gosh. I don't even know how that's actually helpful. That, <laughs> it doesn't comes really this, matter, does it? <laughs> as it comes this way, you see more instruments, of yeah. course. Yeah. Because you don't really want to ever, ever pull your shoulder forward no. when you're at the top of the wheel. And that's about it. Yeah, and if we could just move the pedals, that would be great. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're going to all this trouble, we might as well get it absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you yeah. put the yep. pedal probably over an inch and a half, yep. so they're slightly closer, yep. and that yep. should give us enough room. Yep. Clutch uh, rest. Oh, I can hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so where does that put the seat? A long way, whoops, a long way back. Mm, yeah. It's a good job it's not having any back seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes the decision easy on that one. <laughs> Unless you've got legless rear passengers, you see, yeah. So no, there's no problem there then. Wow. Yeah. That's and good. That seat's worked out quite well. That's really I was, good. I was really one of the seat. problem areas. That's, was that's really good for the weight distribution. Mm. I think you would never fit anything in the car with the standard seat. You'd be like, oh, this is hopeless, but it's, mm. it's totally... It, yeah. The problem you get with seats. Remarkable, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, I guess it's a little bit of standard, but it's amazing how you're, you're so much closer to the rear axle yeah. than yeah. the front. <laughs> oh, it looks great, guys. It's, now. it's going to be a really mean driving position because the, the problem I've got with the classic cars is, you know, these poor guys, Simon and his poor guys, every time I get a car in, it's <laughs> seat <laughs> rails out, yeah. new holes in the floor. Yeah. But with something like this that you can do absolutely bespoke driving position, it's, you're going to jump in and just feel right, you know. Great to see you again. Yeah, Good, to be in touch. Good to see you. Cheers. Yeah, take care. Keep you posted. Cheers. Cheers. See you. Feedback was, yeah, it was just Good. like ridiculously constructive. Like yeah. the, the seat sitting, we I felt he was generally very happy with a lot of things, and we've nailed exactly where we want everything. 
and all the design meeting went, yeah, perfect, basically. Where, the, where we'd given choices, he had a clear idea of what he wanted. Where we'd made decisions for him, he was happy with those decisions. So, yeah, all good. I like that. The only other thing which is massively controversial, uh, split opinion usually, is I've just casually wondered about having it on the gauge faces. Um. Yeah, off the record. Yeah. Too late. Yeah. Too late. Off, off the record. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>